Oh, hey. <laughs> no, don't wait. I dropped them all. <laughs> I'm gonna drop Umbreon and feel really bad. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another video on the channel. I haven't uploaded in a while, but I'm going to make a video today talking about all of the changes to the Pokemon competitive structure. Yeah, I'm making a Pokemon video. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about all of the changes at the Pokemon Company International implemented for the 2024-2025 competitive season for both the video game, the card game, uh, I think Go and Unite are in there too. Uh, there are a lot of big changes. Uh, a lot of people are not thrilled. Um, I'm a little skeptical too. I use the term little very lightly. <laughs> I am a lot skeptical here. Um, but a, a new player, I never really got to play in the, the old format with the championship point threshold. So I don't really, I feel like I really don't have a lot of weight to throw around here with my opinion, but I wanted to give it anyway, even though nobody wanted it. <laughs> so if you're new to the channel here, go ahead and hit the like button down below. If you enjoy Pokemon content, I'm definitely going to be making more. Uh, if you don't like Pokemon content, please do not hit the like button. That'll hurt me a lot, and I'll cry, and I'll be an emotional wreck. Uh, hit the like button anyway. Didn't support your favorite little goober. So, we have the 2025 Pokemon Championship Series update. Uh, we are learning about the changes coming to the 2025 Pokemon Championship Series and prepare for our, to prepare for our competitive journey. Let me zoom in here a little bit. There we go. Nice. I'm not going to read everything here at the top. We're just going to go kind of by category here we have the qualification update uh we have event name update cash pricing international championship travel prize update which i'm not i'm not totally familiar with that uh the tournament format top cut big one at home competition pretty big for people that can't travel a lot like me uh regional championship up uh schedule International Championship. We have a lot to cover. Number one, World Championship Qualification Update. So they're changing the World Championship structure for 2025. Uh, rather than like the past year and many before, they had a championship point threshold. It was five to 600, depending on your age. Uh, you hit that threshold, you get a day one invite for World. You win a regional, you're automatically invited. That part will not be changing. The win a regional, get an invite. However, they are doing away with the championship point structure in relation to earning an invite. You no longer are working toward a threshold. Uh, it is now just strictly a certain number of players from each rating zone, age division, and game will earn an invitation to the world championship based on their championship point leaderboard standing. So you no longer have a threshold you have to hit. You're accumulating them, and then the top, however many, get an invite rather than just everybody getting over the threshold. Uh, in addition to the players that qualify via championship points, individual top performers and major events will earn an automatic invitation to the Pokemon World Championship. The regional special champion will receive an invitation, and the top t four finishers of each international championship will earn an invitation. Uh, invite earned through this method will not count toward the total invitation slot for each player in the rating area. I like that. The big thing that we get into here, the championship in invitation limit. So for the Pokemon Trading Card game, uh, you have age division for US and Canada Junior 75 total, uh, Senior 100 total, Master 125 total, and that's the same for Europe, Latin America 50, 50, 100, Oceania 10, 10, and 20. That's crazy. Middle East and South Africa 5, 5, and 10. That's wild. <laughs> Honestly, video game and Pokemon Go, you have for the VGC, um, US and Canada 2020 20, 75, Pokemon Go 75, Europe 2020 20, 75 50, Latin America 15 15 50 and 50, Oceania 10 10 20 and 10, Middle East, South Africa, Africa. We don't have a number. I don't know if that means that they're just not doing it or what what my thoughts on the championship invitation structure uh i'm not i'm personally not a big fan of it i'm willing to give the pokemon company the benefit of the doubt here see how it shapes up in terms of player attendance and regional attendance and everything like that um i do think and no fault of their own to the people to the people that are able to travel a lot for pokemon I'm not faulting them at all for doing that. Go, you know, go do your thing. If you have the bag to do that, absolutely do it. Uh, I would love to be able to travel and play Pokemon, you know, across the globe. That would be pretty dope, honestly. 
But unfortunately, I'm not able to do that. And I'm not going to knock the people that are. But I definitely feel like the people that are able to do that and, you know, able to travel to every regional or all of the international championship or, you know, all of the above, really, um, kind of have a leg up on getting an invite. And I guess, like, in a way, you can make the argument that it should be that way because, like, the most dedicated people to the game should have the best shot at earning an invite. And I agree with that in a way. Uh, I just feel like for a newer player, looking at it objectively as a new player, from my point of view alone, or, like, from another new player looking to enter the game competitively, uh, it can be a little daunting because you, in the past, you had championship points that you worked toward the threshold for, you had a target in mind, it wasn't, you know, you were trying to top a leaderboard or, you know, in my case, make top 125 in the U.S. and Canada, which is incredibly daunting. There are a lot there are a lot of good players in the U.S. and Canada, but having a championship point threshold to work toward kind of gave a target goal for a lot of people where you knew ahead of time if you were going to make it or not. Then you, ha you have to play it out throughout the entire year. Uh, and then at the end of the competitive season, you'll find out if you make it or not. And, to, you know, before you knew, okay, I need to go to a couple local events, I need to get, you know, championship points that way. I could go do go to one more regional, get my invite. You kind of had a feel for where you were. Here, it's a little more touch and go because you don't know until near the end of the season if you're going to make it or not. But like, like I'm, I'm willing and able, you know, to give them the benefit of the doubt to see how it'll work out. Um, as somebody who probably <laughs> wouldn't be performing well enough to make it to a world championship as a player anyway in their first year of, you know, competitive play. I really don't have a dog in the fight here, but <laughs> I, you know, seeing the amount of people that play the game competitively and have played for a while online be frustrated with it, I totally get that too, because it feels restrictive. And then we have the League and Global Challenge Best Finish Limit, or BFL for short. Uh, for League Challenges and League Cups, you have four. I think it dropped by two from last season. Uh, and then the VGC Global Challenge, they have three. Um, kicker. If you're familiar with the best finish limit, then you're, you know, you'll understand that better than me. The best finish limit for championship events, you have regional, special, and international together. Uh, then it's a big point of contention online right now for people, they feel like, the IC or international championship should be limited to one best finish limit. Um, because, you know, people could just farm the international championship and, you know, go to all three or four. I think there are three this year. Go to all three. And the people that aren't able to go to them are already at a disadvantage. And the big thing that I've seen online from a financial point of view, that people who don't have the money to be able to travel everywhere uh, are going to have a really hard time and have it be near impossible to actually make it into world, right? Uh, Pokemon VGC event name, not really that big of a deal. They're just changing the name of two different events. The mid-season showdown will now be called the Video Game League Cup. Premier Challenge will be called the Video Game League Challenge. Not really a big deal. It's more in line with the card game and Pokemon Go. Um, cash prize and boot leader pack. So when you play in an event, you get... Uh, training card game boots your packs for competing in the card game, video game, and Pokemon Go championship event. The number uh, earned is based on individual placement, along with the number of people in the event. Uh, cash prizes are on the line. Pokemon, one thing I like about the Pokemon card game is you actually make money if you play high. It can help with, like, travel and everything. So if you're consistently doing well at events, so if you're not to, like, name drop players, but if you're, like... Uh, Torg Reklev, or your uh, Reagan Reklev, or your, you know, uh, on the video game, uh, your uh, Wolfie, uh, Wolf Glick, um, you know, hopefully I can butcher any of your names if you watch the video, don't hate me forever, um, but if you're, you know, one of them that are, you know, topping multiple regions that, you know, you're making, you're making money for more travel at that point. So it's definitely lucrative for the junior senior division. Uh, if you win the whole thing, you get $2,500 runner up 2k third and fourth one grand five through eight 750. And then lower than that, nada, you get nothing. Uh, for the master division, you win 10 grand. If you win the tournament, 7k for runner up. 
5K, 3rd and 4th, 5 through 8, 3, 9 through 16, 2, and then all the way up to the top 32, you get $1,000, which can, that can definitely help with travel. <laughs> I'm going to be real. Uh, $1,000 right now for me would be, it'd be big. All right. So for the international championship, they have a higher pool. Uh, junior, senior division, 7K, 5K, 3, 2, 1, 750, all the way up to top 32. And then for the master division or the old people division, you know, for people like me who are pushing 30 a month, you get 25K for winning, 15 for runner up, 10K, 7, 5, 3, and 2, all the way up to top 64. Not a bad pride pool. I think it has gone down from the past year, but it's still not terrible. Uh, world championship, you win, you get fifty thousand dollars, thirty all the way down to five for top thirty-two. Overall, I think these are fine. I don't really have an issue with them at all. All right, so they are making updates to travel prize for qualifying players in the twenty twenty-five season. They're expanding uh, the travel reward program to Pokemon Go. Cool. Uh, they've added new prizes here for the trading card game, the video game, and Go players that provide priority registration for top. So pretty much like uh, for an international championship, if you're a top player, you get priority reg. You you know you get in before the general public to register that kind of deal. You know, travel stipend benefits are are good. They help. You know, they help you get home. <laughs> Uh, they help you eat, that kind of deal. I don't really know what they were last year or if they were as prominent last year. The fact that they're expanding the program makes me think that they're doing they're doing a net gain here. Um, I definitely think, you know, for example, even 2K for 18 up in region would be it would it would pay for a plane ticket home and then you have extra. You know, so you could you could pay for your plane ticket, you could pay for a hotel, that kind of deal. It was a tournament format and top cut. And like the 2024 World Championship, they are shifting the tournament format and method for determining which players advance to the top cut will continue throughout the rest of the 2025 championship series. So if you have 33 and 64 people playing, uh, obviously you have seven rounds for day one, uh, day two match point threshold, none. Uh, and then no, so it's day two. So looking at it here, it'll be a lot harder to, you know, top going or top cut going forward. Uh, one big thing that I saw that, you know, kind of checked out is that IDing or intentional drawing and tying, not really going to be much of a thing going forward. People are going to be, you know, more aggressively pushing for day two than before. So, you know, you're going into your final two rounds, you're not going to ID because you could potentially miss out on top cut now, given the... Uh, you know, tournament structure for Top Cut. So rather than do that, people are going to be playing out more games. I, again, that's not a, not a bad thing. I don't really see an issue with intentional drawing before. I mean, if you're, you know, one round away and your opponent's one round away and a tie will make sure you both get in and maybe play each other again. I mean, that's not a big deal, but I guess it's not really a big deal limiting the amount of IDing going forward. It means that more people are going to be playing it out and there will be more Pokemon played. The at-home competition. So they're adding more online tournaments in 2025, giving players more opportunities to make progress toward earning an invitation to the Pokemon World Championship. So uh, for someone like me that can't travel a lot, at-home competition over webcam or, you know, what have you, are going to be good. <laughs> you know, I'm looking forward to that, being able to play the game at home. We're waiting on more information for that. So I'm looking forward to that. We have the schedule here, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, we have Baltimore Convention Center. I've got my eye on that one, being not that far away from it. Uh, Germany in Dortmund. Yeah, Dortmund, Germany. Uh, we have uh, Brazil here. We have Peru, Kentucky, France, uh, Poland, Argentina. And then for, I think, the first stop of the year. Yeah, okay. So they're going to reveal additional regional championships. Right now, my initial thought, after looking at these, like we have Poland, Argentina, Sacramento, Germany again, uh, Colombia, and then we have Toronto, Canada. So looking at this, I would imagine they're going to add more dates, you know, further out. I think until, you know, at least like March, like I said. But right now, you know, the only ones that are <laughs> really in my wheelhouse to attend are Baltimore, Maybe Kentucky and Sacramento. I mean, they're a little bit more of a hike, but going to like Brazil, Peru, France, Germany, Colombia, that'd be cool. It'd be cool to travel. Now, am I going to be able to do that? No. <laughs> However, 
If things change, I will be traveling to all of these. Latin American National Championships in LAIC are in uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil. EUIC will be in London. That'd be a fun one to go to. I've always wanted to go to London. Uh, and then North American International Championships are going to New Orleans again. Kind of went over what I thought throughout that whole thing, but I, I guess kind of like to reel it in and recap. New structure rather than the championship point threshold going with the top however many. In my case, the top 125 for North America, Canada, Manchester. You know, it's a little jarring. Um, you know, obviously there have been rumors from multiple prominent Pokemon players that had heard that they were going to take that approach uh, and change the BFL. And, you know, they did that, lo and behold. All of the prophecy has come true. <laughs> I definitely understand the frustration on the more casual competitive player side. And I, I get the argument on the more competitive pro player side of, you know, playing the game better, what have you. Do I think that... You know, we should be telling people to just play the game better to get an invite. No, absolutely not. Um, you know, the one thing about the Pokemon card game, the video game, all that that I really like is that, it's, you know, a very inclusive community. Everybody's welcome. You know, they all come together for a love of a franchise, you know. So at the end of the day, telling somebody just to be better at the game and maybe you'll get an invite. Not really, not really my cup of tea. Overall, the new structure will give the more hyper-competitive players a higher platform to shine on, uh, especially with the lower amount of invites that are being distributed. Uh, you know, obviously the top of the top of the top of the top are going to be going, uh, but on the other end of that coin, there are going to be people who are playing really well that are going to miss out on their invite due to the new structure where they would have previously hit that, you know, threshold and been able to go. The big thing that I could, you know, take away from this and share to other people that are new to the game like me, uh, you know, that realistic entry-level goal for the game, right? If it's your first year competing, like, you know, I'm aiming to have it be my first year competing in competitive Pokemon play. A win goal for a regional, or maybe you want a day two. Let that be your goal. Or you want a top, you want a top cut on day two. You want to get top 32. Have that be your goal. And not immediately to shoot for the world championship. Um, I think that'll be a lot healthier going into the 2025 year for, you know, people who are competitive uh, that are newer to the game that maybe can't travel as much. Having lower goals, keeping the bar a little bit lower initially. Um, and we're going to say, you know, not, not shooting for the moon. Um, would lead to a lack of disappointment, I think. Uh, but anyway, guys, that will do it for me. It's kind of been a long video. It's been 30 minutes of me ranting and waffling over here. If you appreciate all my opinions, uh, go ahead and like the video and comment down below. Let me know what you think of all the changes that are coming. Uh, hit the subscribe button with the bell notification on if you haven't already. And I will catch you all in the next video. Bye, everybody.